Hey there, this is Sarah, your socially awkward seller, and I am coming to you with a sales video, just a couple things that sold. And I wanted to um, talk about getting suspended on eBay. Um, I listed a recalled item um, and I was pushing my luck because it told me that it was a recalled item, but I'm like, no, 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 this blade is not in the recall. This is one of the replacements, replacement blades. So, you know, but I was wrong. And so they said, you know, this is not the first time that we've talked to you about this little missy. So we're going to suspend you for three days. And not only can you not list anything, we're gonna hide all of your listings too. So you can't sell anything. Well, let's talk about that. Cause I'm shipping five today. Um, so when they say that they are hiding your listings, what they mean is, someone is searching it newly, they can't find it. However, if there are off, there are likers or watchers and you wanna send offers, those items can sell. Also, apparently either, um, either there was a glitch or somebody had already liked something and, or watched something and decided to buy it. I'm not sure. But anyway, so I got this notification yesterday morning that no sales for three days. And I really kind of started to panic a little um, because that's half a week. This is my only source of income. And I am more like the grasshopper than the ants. You know, I, I spend like I'm going to get paid again tomorrow all the time, you know, and um, it's just who I am and I embrace it. Um, and so I started to just panic a little bit. What am I going to do? I have money in savings. It's not like I was going to starve or something, but you know, I don't try not to touch that. But anyway, so, um, yesterday, uh, I had sold this item before, but they hadn't paid for it until yesterday. So I had this $25 sale on a West Bend high performance, uh, food processor. This is the model. I think this is a 6500-1, and um, I usually pick those up when I see it, when I see them, because they will usually do $25 to $40. It really just depends on what's with them, what accessories are with them. But anyway, so that sold. And then I picked this up on New Year's Day um, from the St. Vinny Bins, and um, this is a Pampered Chef Rock Croc. And um, so I probably paid five or six dollars for this. Yeah, probably five dollars for this. And uh, because, you know, I buy that by weight and it is a crock. And that a crock. Woo! Uh, anyhow, um, that sold for $27.59. I sent an offer on these. Remember, I bought these on New Year's Day or Christmas Eve, I can't remember, in a bag. And I'm like, oh, I could probably sell those. Um, this one sold. I sent an offer for $11.98, and it sold. And I was still in panic mode a little, but, you know, I do have that other store. So worst comes to worst. It'll make a few bucks. Um, and these are parts for a Barbie dollhouse or something, $9.19. And then, and then I get the sale that I was not anticipating. And uh, I'll just put it right here. Um, I bought this item um, probably a good year ago. I, probably a year ago. Got it at one of those little Mennonite thrift stores up in Columbus. And uh, I paid $15 for it. And basically what it is... It's for uh, seeing impaired, is that a thing? Um, yeah, people that have issues seeing, not necessarily blind, but you know, people that maybe have glaucoma or, or other issues where, uh, where their sight is impeded. Um, this magnifies reading material and uh, projects it onto a monitor. And this is a pretty expensive setup. Now it's probably from the early 2000s I'm guessing because really you can just increase the font on your computers now it's not that big a deal but anyway for you know a piece of mail that you might get you can lay it on this little table put the camera over it and there's a little 
um, flat top that moves front and back and you know you can maneuver it all these different ways so that you can move whatever you're reading on this little table on this little uh little counter thing anyway um yeah five hundred and ninety seven dollars and change um i'm getting ready to pack this to ship it and it is not going to be a fun item because a monitor and uh, a smallish monitor um but the little table thing that that goes with this is a very heavy kind of particle board thing with um some metal mechanicals on it and uh yeah it's not gonna be fun to ship i may end up putting this in a couple of boxes we'll see when i'm done and i'm trying to decide would because this is such an expensive item it's going to ship in multiple boxes at least two um do i insure each box for the full amount of the um item the reason I say that is if they break one item, this person is going to return the whole thing. And if they return the whole thing, I have to refund the whole thing. And because um, this is not something you can just go out to Walmart and buy or wherever. Um, so if they break one, but it's insured for the full amount, um, you know, will that cover me? Who knows with USPS right now, but I'll just make that decision in a, in a minute. So, um, Tomorrow will be the last day of my suspension. Um, I'm trying to get things worked through. I'm kind of lazy right now because I'm like, it doesn't matter what I do because they're not going to let me list anything anyway. But I am trying to get some, uh, I don't know why I had to become a valley girl to say that. I'm not sure. Um, but uh, yeah, so I, I'm, you know, I'm not really very motivated, but I need to get some stuff at least drafted and photographed so that Saturday I can just start making all this stuff live. But anyway, um, I'm going to get this shipped. I'm going to get this packed. I bought some pool noodles to kind of help me along my way. Dollar Tree has these. Let me grab one. They're a smaller pool noodle than what you would normally see. Um, but these are perfect for... Um, shipping like uh, wall art because you can just cut these in whatever length you need slit down the side slide these onto the frame and it makes a really nice protection i'm going to use these in the box to help protect my monitor and some of the other pieces so i bought 10 of these uh for ten dollars ten dollars because it's a dollar tree but anyway um and I'm gonna use, the, use these to maybe keep this crap from breaking. We'll see. I'll be back with you. Let's see how I did. All right, I'm back. Am I? Yep, I am. Um, so I got that big item shipped. It went into um, three separate boxes, a total combined weight of 56 pounds and uh, for whatever reason of course the sh shipping was more than I expected I don't know if I thought I was gonna ship this a different way or I don't know it doesn't matter they still paid more than half the shipping and I paid $15 for that item so I am not mad and I did insure it um, yesterday I went to an auction and I bought a box full of flatware um, for $25. It's silver plate. I don't know if it's going to be worth anything or not. We'll see. And then I bought a box of ephemera for $10. And I thought I'd show you some of the things that were in that box. I'm not going to go through everything. Um, just because some of it's not very exciting. And what I'm showing you might not be very exciting to you. But I like ephemera and... I'm you know, I'm very sentimental and very nostalgic, so um, I like this older stuff. This looked like a box of things like your great aunt would have with all of her like old manuals and receipts and all that stuff from the things that she's bought over the years. Um, so that's essentially what I bought. But these are some of the more interesting or the ones I think will sell for a little more. This is a Pioneer Electronics. This is for stereo components. 
and this is basically a catalog for receivers and then on this side it's got some of the speakers too and uh pioneer stuff i mean it was very 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 popular in the 70s and 80s um maybe before that but i know in the 70s and 80s it was and uh somebody might want this i, I i'll probably list it for like 10 or 12 dollars and with my ephemera, I take whatever, pretty much whatever they offer me. So if somebody comes in and offers me $6.50, I'll probably take it. Here is a manual for a real to real tape recorder. And this brand, I don't know. So I don't know if it's a cheap brand or if it is like a high-end brand, but not very popular. But this is made by WebCore, and it says Chicago, Illinois on the back. And this is the Royal Model 2711. Sounds very fancy. Um, but it's got like some, you know, instructions on how to do, how to splice tape and all that stuff. So uh, again, I'll list that for like 10 or $12 and whatever they offer, they offer. Um, this is uh, an instruction. I just, I wasn't going to show you this, but um, it was just stuck in that one, that manual. It's a heat -a -later fireplace um, installation manual. Uh, I'm going to wait and show you that one in a minute because it's my favorite one. So there were a couple of these. Um, this is for the dual uh, turntable, um, United Audio, and... Um, this is like a, um, a, not a catalog, but like a brochure for it that tells you everything about it. Um, or it may be an instruction manual, owner's manual. This is the brochure for it. Um, and it's, you know, nice. I've got two of these. I probably list these for $9.99 and take whatever offer I get. Um, it says here the unit 3080, number 3080, was $279.95. Sounds a little pricey to me. Uh, but anyway, like I said, I've got more of those. Here is a brochure for a Pioneer receiver um, with all the info. Like when people cared about the, the uh, circuit boards, like I know or anything. Um, but, you know, again, somebody might want that. This is a little manual for club cookware, and, and we've all seen these when we're out thrifting. Um, and I don't know if the if the aluminum cookware like this is worth anything. I'm not sure. But uh, I definitely thought somebody might want this little brochure. Um, so it's got the yellow, the chocolate brown, the avocado, and the orange. Very, very standard colors for that era. Um, and the date on the back is 1974. They Somebody wrote that date. They're, they're like my grandparents. My grandmother, her name was Anna May. Not Anna May like the cartoons, but Anna May. Um, she would, even on furniture, she would put some kind of little paper thing on the back and wrote like when she bought it and where she got it, you know, if it was passed down to her or something. And then she would always have like who it's supposed to go to. Um, and I think, I guess that was just a thing back then. Um, so I always dress like this when I'm getting ready to shampoo the floor, like every time. Look at this. This is for an Electrolux carpet shampooer and she's got her hair did. Um, a dress on, heels, and she is shampooing her floor. God love her. Um, but this uh, on the back says that this was purchased in March, 20, March 27th of 1970. So here it is. Here is the owner's manual for this. Um, and again, She looks really too nice, too well-dressed to be vacuuming. But this one has the, um, it has the receipt in it. And 
This one is from 1970. There's another one in here. This one's from 1955. And look how happy they are to get a vacuum cleaner. Even the dog. Look at that dog. He's so happy. Um, look at this art. Wow. It says, touch no dirt, breathe no dirt, see no dirt. Watch Joe Dirt. Um, this one has a receipt in it, too. And I thought it would be interesting to share with you that they bought this vacuum cleaner in 1955, and they paid $181 for it. In, in $181 in 1955. Well, I asked the Googs, I said, Googs, how much is that in today's money? And Google told me that it was $1,742. Can you imagine? I mean, it's like buying a Kirby or, or, or a Rainbow Vac or something like that now. Um, people have been calling me all day and I'm really tired of it. Uh, anyhow, so yeah, $1,742. Now, on the other one, um, on this guy, <clears throat> they paid uh, $1,526, something like that. Um, it was $224, and it um, it calculates in, for inflation and all of that, translates into $1,526 for a vacuum cleaner. And I think about that, and I think about how, um, like, how disposable our stuff is. I think if I today gave $1,500 for a vacuum cleaner, I would take such good care of that. Like, it would last me for the next 20, 30 years, because that's a lot of money for a vacuum cleaner. But since I can go to the Walmart and get one for, like, 60 bucks, you know, you know it's going to be a landfill in a year. <clears throat> So, yeah, it's very distressing to me. Um, this is a manual for an Osterizer blender. Again, this is not exciting. However, Anime had put the receipt in here. And what Anime bought um, was a card table for $7.95 in antique white. She also bought four chairs in antique white and the total for that was $27.30 and and at the same time um and this is from Schmidt Furniture and I didn't know Schmidt Furniture which is a local chain sold blenders but I guess they do this Oster blender was $37 so calculated that for inflation and that made this Osterizer blender, this uh, eight-speed spin cookery blender, um, two hundred and eighty-nine dollars. Come on, they don't they don't cost it now, and I understand that. Before, you know, all this stuff wasn't made in China and all that stuff. Um, this was made in Milwaukee, made in the USA. So, my have how things have changed, haven't they? A um, couple more things is this uh, Frigidaire built-in cooking top. Now, when I see the phrase cooking top, I feel like it's a blouse you got to wear when you're making dinner. But uh, actually, hmm, I was surprised to, know, to learn that no, it's just a stovetop insert. But um, really cool uh, graphics on this, photographs on this. Um, this is a Schwinn bicycle, tan tandem bicycle owner's manual. I'm, I was most excited about this. I don't know why. Uh, because look at those guys. Wouldn't you buy a bicycle from those guys? I trust those guys. Like, I know that this bicycle is going to keep me in my relationship forever because it's a tandem bike. But I digress. Anyway. But I was really excited about this. I don't know if it'll be worth much. Again, I've only got $10 in the whole lot. So I am more than guaranteed of getting my money back because I sell this kind of stuff all the time. So this is the last thing. And um, 
I just wanted to show you this one thing. This is actually um, some installation uh, instructions for Frigidaire for the cooktop and for the um, oven that they bought. But this is a little uh, Frigidaire catalog. And I don't know when it's from, uh, maybe 1962. But if I was going to buy a kitchen, it'd be a pink one. Look at that kitchen with the pink. I mean, I got, I, I'm sorry. I, I know it probably doesn't excite other people, but it does me. And look at that teal blue. Wonderful. Um, okay, here's something I didn't even know was a thing. And honestly, I still wish it was a thing. Um, in this oven, like the insides pull out so you can clean it. How cool is that? Plus it's in pink. I mean, it's in pink. Um, yeah. So pretty excited about that. Look at this cook cooktop. It's in pink. Um, here's a washer in kind of a turquoise blue or washer and dryer in pink. I guess I've seen a few of like the pink or blue appliances from back then, but not that many. Most of the ones that you run across if they're older are the avocado, the gold, the orange. So I was just very intrigued to see, you know, these other appliances. None of these are in color while well, the, the oven door is, but um, you know, get yourself a little AC unit. There's the blue cooktop again. She's wearing her cooking top. And by golly, look at that. Is that a, is it? It's a dishwasher in pink. My goodness. I don't know why that makes me so happy, but it does. It really does. So anyway, those are some of the things that I bought um, in this ephemera lot. And um, I like picking up things like that. Um, and cards and things like that. They make me happy. I mean, take, they take a little while to list because there's a little research involved, but I still like buying them and they're usually cheap. So anyway, yeah. So um, yeah, a couple more sales this afternoon. I will show you those at another time. Um, but um, apparently my store isn't turned off as much as eBay thinks it is. Um, I'm not complaining. I, I uh, attribute it to eBay's glitchy everywhere. And so maybe it's one time the glitches are working for me and not against me. So I may have said that earlier in the video. I don't know. I got no memory. So anyway, um, I am going to stop rambling now because that's all I'm doing at this point. Thank you for being here. I appreciate you. Like, comment, subscribe. Just remember that the dream works when you do. So keep dreaming, keep working. I'll see you guys the next time. Bye.